Okay, now let's take a look at foreshortening in a more direct observational uh, way, or maybe we could say a more practical way or a little bit less theoretical. And we'll look at and try to draw exactly you know, what we see. So I've got several images here that we'll, we'll look at and uh, I'll try to run through uh, as many sketches as I can. And we're gonna do quicker sketches um, to stay loose with it, not get too, too tight. But try to stay also as crisp and as, as clean as we can. So it's it's quick sketching, it's technical, uh, it's clean, but there's not a lot of detail. We're drawing simplified or sim relatively simple forms. And materials I'm going to use today, I'm going to use newsprint today um, for these drawings, and I'm going to use Carbothello pencils uh, and a hard edge. I like to use a hard edge to sketch with. If I've got, I know I've got a lot of planes and angles, but you'll, hopefully you'll see that I, I utilize it in a way that is not too stiff or too tight. I want to get you to stay loose. You can still stay gestural even when you're drawing with um, still life uh, objects as well. All right, so let's get started. So the first image I have is of a couple of boxes, a cylinder, and a gl uh, glass uh, uh, cup and it looks like a little orange or tangerine and you'll notice that <clears throat> what we've got here is most everything is looking now slightly uh, from above except for the uh, the cylinder which is generally kind of at our uh, eye level we don't see the top or bottom so much but we do see more of uh, the left side so the first thing I'm going to establish is that plane of the table so about running right through uh, here in my drawing I'll establish the plane of my table and I'm going to try to go pretty fast so when, what also I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of demos for you and then you can take the images that I have for these drawings and I'll put them at the end of the, the, this lesson and um, you can <clears throat> image capture them or you can freeze them, pause them and draw from them and then and certainly most importantly is go and get your own still life objects and, and uh, draw from them. I think that's uh, truly truly key to all this. So the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at, I think I'll go for, is this that kind of purple box. And I'm gonna start to find where it falls in, in its composition. And what you'll notice is it's a little, little higher, it breaks the, um, the table plane here, but we can still see the top of it. So we'll come across here. It's kind of a rectangular box, one point box. <clears throat> and it's got a little foreshortening problem, doesn't it? So, notice I can quick sketch, I'll fly around, tighten up my angles. So, we do come and see a little bit of this left side, about right in through here. Okay, we can sketch that up, we see that through in here, a little higher, because we see the top plane of that box, and it starts to disappear up and through here in this particular plane. So, we know that the table, we're looking down on that table because we still see the top of this box here, right into here. Notice now the difference or the width now in length, the top length of this box, very, very slight view, right to here, right? We don't see a whole lot of it. So right in through here, we'll cut that box off. Okay, this angle will come back. I know that that tube is sitting on top of it, that cylinder, and we'll put it on top in a moment. Lots of foreshortening there. Okay, so what will be true of this will be true of the figure as well. So lots of foreshortening. We get our front, we get our left plane, we get our top. And now let's go and put that cylinder on. And so what I look for is where it touches the box here. That's where it starts to sit down. Okay, we see that. Then we can start to push for its width. And its width, wider over here. Okay, and at its widest, it's a little bit wider than the end of this box. Do you see that? About right in through there. So there's our tube, there's our cylinder. Right in through here, so you widen this out even further. It's a one point cylinder, so it's just about a true circle there. Through here, Sat, sit that down. <clears throat> there we go, through here. Then I'll just kind of draw a front 
slice look. So you can see that with that cylinder ends in through here. Now we have our foreshortening problem, correct? Okay, just like we did in our lesson before. What's happening? Well, we want to get that very distinct view coming back, right? So it's leaving us and moving back to the left. So it's pushed over to from the center of our vision slightly to the right. So here's what's happening. It's tapering this way, right? We see that angle, and we see that angle tapering now in here, correct? Right in through there, a little bit darker in through here, and there we go. So we see taper, we see taper, and now we get that overlap. So the back part of the cylinder, right in through here, and over, we see that overlap. So it's gonna be way over, truly all of it, about right here, right? We don't see inside this one, and so it's opaque. And so to feel that, I'll sketch this out, and so you see that, so see how far that's pushed over in terms of its overlapping. And then we'll bring this angle over, not this angle, but this curve, of our cylinder again here so we can see that we'll tighten that up okay <clears throat> we'll come over we'll tighten this up a little bit further we'll see that and now we've got a nice foreshortened cylinder in our composition to work with and of course this has a little bit of shading up right through here right in through here maybe around the top we'll just give it a little bit of a, a kick in terms of shaving and so we see that overlap we see width we see the length of the back to the front shorten greatly right in our composition. Okay, so now we placed our box here. We placed our cylinder on top of that. Then we can go over here if we want. We can start to work with this orange. This is truly just a sphere, right? So its basic formation is essentially just a sphere. So we'll get that sketched in. It's not quite truly spherical, right? It's got a little bit oblong, which is okay. Get a feel for it there. Put a little shadow down there. Remember, this is going to be a tighter edge, crisper edge. That come on top there. And then we've got this nice glass, <clears throat> excuse me, glass bottle. And so it's hidden a little bit here. So here we find our ellipse. It's almost at our eye level. There's the ellipse of our glass bottle right in through here. Of course, it disappears behind the orange. <coughs> We see just a little bit emerging on that side. Then we can start to bring down the structure of our little glass whiskey flask, I suppose, shot glass, if you will. <clears throat> we can bring this down, curve this over just a little bit. And, you know, again, draw through your objects, draw through behind them to find their structural component. So right in through here, we'll see that. And then, of course, it emerges about right in through there. Now, this ellipse gets a little, ellipse gets a little distorted because of the refraction reflecting that's going on. But I'll, I'll tighten it up for you and see it as this kind of ellipse. A little bit more open than here because we're looking more down on now, correct? Right, so we have that. And then we have the end of our glass bottle about right in through here. I could have brought that down a little bit more, but that's okay. Good enough for now. All right, so we see this is a series of ellipses in through here. Kind of bring that slight reflection in through there. So we've got that side pretty much established, right? And I'm just going to give this back plane a little tonality here just to show that it's in that back plane. I know it's different shaded than what we see, but I want to show you that three-dimensionality there. Okay, and I could throw a little, little across here. This is more about structure than it is about light and value. All right, so let's go on to these two objects on the other side. They're also foreshortened. They're one-point boxy kind of forms. The back one's a milk carton. We couldn't tell that because we can't even see the, the very back top of it because it's laying down. And the front one's kind of a, just a liquid turpentine type bottle. Our true center of vision is about right in through here. So that's why we see the left side here, right? And we see the right side of these forms uh, in our composition here. So let's go on and do that. We'll do the, do the back one first. So we've got about, just, just visually kind of measuring about this much space in between. 
So I'll start to feel that out, and then I'll start to find the front plane of this form about right in through here, and it's lower um, in the composition, so it's farther away. So the, verter the, the horizontal of the front part of that box is about right in through here, maybe a little bit lower, maybe right in through there, then I'll bring up a vertical for it here, okay? <clears throat> And it ends up horizontally about the end of the back of the box here. We'll talk about horizontal vertical alignment in, a tr in, its, in its true longer lesson structure uh, for another lesson. So it's fairly much a rectangle, almost a cubic kind of uh, box. So I'll draw the back end that we can't see. It's about right in through here. Now it goes back into space, we see a slight view, it almost ends up at the back of the table. I'll stop it just a little bit less about right in through there. So it feels like it's moving back in space here. And we've got a little bit of angled up here because we see the top. So we know that our true eye level is somewhere about right in through here. Here's our eye level across, roughly right in through, right in through here. All right, so we bring this angle up just slightly in through here. And we bring up the back of the box, there to there. Okay, we see that coming through. And so now we can pull the back of the box here across, and this would feel something like this in perspective. This line would be further, it's got further to go to that implied vanishing point that we don't see, but we know it's there. All right, so there's our box through there, and that's really a milk carton. And I'll give it a little shading here. I'll shade this kind of to the direction of the vanishing point. I could have done that over here too as well. You can kind of lift your, move your body over and shade that. Like so. Gives you a little bit more structure there. All right, so let's put this other bottle uh, on top or uh, in front of it. And there's a little bit of space in between it. So there's about this much space where that front form, boxy jar form container ends. So it's about right in through here. And I'm working on feeling the back part of it forward in this direction, okay? Then I'm, I'm starting to get a, a gestural feel for it here. Then I'm starting to get a feel for as it comes up here, okay, and higher. Okay, there's the space in between. We have to have that. That's an open space. Then we come up a little bit. How much higher is it? Well, it's probably about right in through there, and it's still lower than the height of the top of our cylinder, which, which we want. So we're good to go. Good to go there. Here's kind of the very apex where it turns back in this direction in through there. There we go. We have that. All right, so we're good to go there. Now let's go ahead and get the rest of this jar form in our composition. So we can start to feel its front form moving through here, this right side, and then we can get the true, true feeling of its front in through here, and wrap up its side here, okay? So it's got a little curved kind of structural lip. It's a one point form, but it does have some foreshortening, foreshortening through here, correct, right? This is a longer milk carton tube, so it goes back quite, quite nicely, about seven or eight inches. So now we'll kind of come up, we'll bring a vertical here. We'll just feel where this vertical comes up and leave it there just for now. And we'll start to feel this vertical come up. We'll start to feel that in, comp in the composition. Through here, in through here, okay, correct. I can tighten this up a little bit. I can sketch it out, then I can come back with my ruler, my hard edge, tighten that up a little bit. So it's a sketch, technical kind of sketch. And through here, tighten this up, a little one through there. <clears throat> okay, now I want to find out where this that shadow plane ends, and it kind of ends in the same plane as this back box in through here. I just happen to have that. It's a little bit thicker, so I'll make a kind of a thicker line. You can put a little a couple of dark lines on top. So I kind of move my line work thick and thin all over. And so that tells me where this angle is, because we're still flat now in through here. So I'll come up, this kind of, it's kind of a triangular kind of set of forms right here, or shape, in through here, kind of curves over, comes down, in through here, ends. All right, so we turn over, can tighten it up, in through here, go down, go down as it connects, 
right to there. You can connect that over. All right. Through there to there. Now we've got three dimensional depth and distance. So this starts to, now we don't see the top of this anymore, so we start to come in slightly downward, just, just slightly, just a little bit. So in here I'll turn and come down. Here's the thickness of that form, about right in through here. So I'll repeat that angle that it's on, right in through there, okay? And I can shade that a little bit, give it a little bit of tone, so you can see that emerge right in through there, okay? <clears throat> then we can start to find and feel our true side. Now this is slightly uh, ab uh, below our eye level, so this angles up a little bit here, okay? And reconnects with the end of the box or end of the, the carton form about right in through here. You can bring that in just slightly. And now we're starting, you can see we're getting that very strong foreshortened kind of feeling right in through here, okay? I'll put a little shadow on it so you can see it there. Look how foreshortened that is. So we're on our way to finishing this out, this first sketch. You can tighten this up, tighten it up. A little bit through here. And let's finish this back part of this form. So we have our thickness here going back in space, slightly right through there, okay? Then we can pull our back vertical up right in through here. It's a little bit lower as we come down. We can judge that coming about right in through here. Okay, we see that. Got a little bit of edge coming downward. Here's the thickness right in through here. Okay, right in through there. We can give that a little bit of a kick and we've got a tip of our thickness here and there. Tighten that up. So now we can bring the top of this over. And it's about at our eye level, so we don't see the true top of it. And then this line ends here, through there. And now we can start to get the ellipse of the top of this bottle where it twists and turns open. So it comes in a little bit and indents in through here. It's kind of a flat shape, right in through there. And then we see this ellipse. This is so tight at about eye level, it almost feels straight across, but it's got a slight curve to it, kind of like this, okay, instead of straight across. So I'm gonna give it a just perceptually minor curve, probably can't even tell, and that's okay. But just a little bit of a curve right in through there, just slightly to give that just a little bit of a tick. <coughs> in through there. Then I'm going to bring that thickness up to here, okay? And then I know it's a little bit higher because we can see it. And I know where it ends, about right here, and it comes on up. Right there, correct? And then let's give that its final curve. So I'll use more of a point of my pencil, and I'll give that that elliptical curve that it needs, it deserves, right, to finish out the composition in there. Now I can put a little tone in through there. Put a little tone in through there, and we're kind of well on our way. All right, so we've got our forms laid in. You know, one thing to, to show you horizontally, remember this, this box is, is the closest to us, so it's going to be lowest in our picture plane. See that right in through here? It's a little bit lower than this box. I could have pushed this box up maybe a little bit, but that's okay in terms of that. So you get the idea. So now we've got foreshortening, severe foreshortening with this cylinder here. Okay, in our composition, we've got severe foreshortening here, here, and here. So we've got boxy forms, and we've got a cylindrical, a couple of cylindrical type forms in our composition, and we're working on ellipses. So really beefy kind of uh, lesson here in drawing from objects. We're kind of starting to put everything together uh, in our composition. All right, okay, let's go on now to another drawing. All right, here we go. So this one we've got now a different point of view, correct? So we take a look at this, we'll analyze a little bit of what we're seeing is now we're looking up underneath quite a bit that top left cylinder. Now we've got that PVC piping, which has got some nice um, kind of angled uh, tubes coming out of that top tube. And then we've got the other cylinder a little bit lower, a little bit smaller, 
um, and about our eye level so we see just the left side of it. We don't see much of a top or bottom of it. And of course, we've got an orange there or a tangerine and we've got this little trinket box too that's pulled off away and it's pretty, pretty flat too. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is establish again our um, table and I'll establish the back uh, tabletop first. So about right in through here and in the front part of the tabletop will be about right in through here in terms of our composition. And just for structural drawing, I'll tighten that up. So stay loose. Stay kind of gestural and structural, and um, we want to capture the essence of the structure of these forms best we can. All right, so there we go. So we've got our table, and we've got our back part of our table, too. And of course, all this falls back down in the space, so I'll give it a little bit of kind of uh, hatching marks to, to say that that's down. All right, so let's go for this now. Let's put this first um, form in our composition. It's gonna be this PVC piping. So I'll start to figure out its height, how I want it, in kind of its length in through here. So I've got that, I'll bring that down, I'll bring this vertical down. So I've got these two verticals, and I'm gonna sit down this piping on the ground and I'm gonna feel front and back of it, so we're looking slightly down on it, so it's actually a little bit more closed, probably like that, right in through there, so I'll feel that, and I'm gonna bring up its height now, in terms of its composition, with a vertical line, a little bit tighter line in through here, a little tighter line in through here. It's true kind of one point, sort of ellipse in through here. This ellipse is above now our eye level. Our eye level here is probably about right in through here. Looks like, looks to be about where the top, well not quite with it, kind of sort of in the middle where that uh, second cylinder is. So about right in here, this line that I'm making. So that means that this is, this ellipse is gonna be closed. It's gonna curve open, uh, closed this way. So it's gonna curve slightly downward. So we're gonna get this downward ellipse here, touch about here and here. Sometimes I'll make a little dot point just to kind of force the eye in a little bit on that lips, and then that lips will be about like that, the back part of it, okay? So let's bring down now the structural width of the outside just a little bit. I'll bring that in. This will come in angled here, angled here slightly, and we'll bring that over and just give the illusion of that thickness there, bring that in, down and through there. This is not really the point of it, but I wanted just to show you just a little bit through here. And this almost becomes a straight ellipse. Do you see that right in through there? Almost straight. Let me get a little bit of that thickness coming in down to just get the illusion of that. Okay, so we have that, all right? Now I'm gonna go, I'll put these down in a moment, but I'm gonna draw this, this um, cylinder first so you'll see it. A couple of things. Here's where it touches the cylinder about right in here, right? It's sitting on top. It's a curved surface, so there's not a lot of uh, places it can touch. I actually had to, there's a piece of tape underneath it you don't see just to get it to hold, just to raise it up. So here's where it's slightly touching about right in through here, back underneath and inside that tubing. And then right here is where we see it overlap the vertical here. So that's kind of where I start to feel that back part, the gestural part of that, um, that cylinder in the back here and curve draw through, drawing through, curving it on up, it ends, it overlaps in through here. So drawing through is very important, okay? So here and here, now this back, we're drawing the back curvature here, right here, okay? Trying to feel where it's at here and through here all the way over, okay? So there's kind of its true center, one point cylinder, okay? Now let's start to feel the front form, the front curve, pushing it a little bit forward. So I'm judging kind of the, the distance, the width between here and where it starts in through here. So it's right about through here, okay? I'm trying to feel what, where those two touch and overlap. So remember, overlapping is a very important Concept. So we're through here, correct? And now it's going to be much larger, wider, lots of space between there, coming up and over, coming up and over, 
through here and are overlapping. Okay, and then coming on over. Right in through here. There we go. Okay, and so now I can start to play with this angle even further. So we can see in our image where we're going to want we want to go with our angle of our cylinder about right here's where it touches right in through there I'll give it a little bit of a stronger mark so you can see it we'll bring it down here touches there then it starts to curve down okay and so we want to get and make sure that we get a pretty good feel for the width between here okay and here right in our composition I'll darken this in a little bit so you can see that Right in through here, so we're starting to get that form emerging through this curve. And see now the overlap picks up at the back, right? Can you see that? Picks up here and through here. And so that's a strong sense of overlap and a strong sense of foreshortening. And here's its apex about right in through here in terms of its. The, the, the truest, thickest witness of its foreshortening right in through there. And I can throw a little tone over here just to show you that. Through. Okay, so now let's finish it off on this side. Right in through here. And this kind of curves in, starts to curve naturally over. Okay. So now we're drawing our length, and we try and we hit that more of a straighter line. That's the length of the tube coming over, and it's starting to curve about right in through there. Okay, so now we have that curve. So we're observing now that which we were talking about in theory or in drawing practical forms earlier. Through here and through there. Touching in through here, I can throw a little shadow where it falls on our tubing. Right in through here. Okay. All right, so now we've got our first difficult foreshortening problem. And again, what we're seeing, too, is we're looking up at now the cylinder. So it is above our eye level. I had to raise it put it up on a still life object because I couldn't throw it up in the air and freeze it, right? That's just too much, too much work. I don't know if I'm good enough a photographer for that. So now we're looking up at it, okay? Later on, you're going to see that that could be a forearm or a leg coming at us when we deal with uh, the figure. So this groundwork that we're doing will help us establish better uh, drawing practice for the figure. So let's get these other tubes uh, in, in our composition coming out of this uh, front uh, upright piece of plastic. So how I handle this is, is, is in this way. So I'm looking at where these two emerge and they're fairly symmetrical. So I'll kind of just sketch a straight line here to get their, their, their starting of their thickness. Okay, and then here's the true center right in through here. They don't touch that center. They start to kind of curve here, right, and they curve over. So they're, they're attached to and kind of sliced into this pipe a little bit. So there's a curve here. It ends about right in through there. Same thing on the other side. There's a little bit of a, maybe just a little bit more. Maybe there's a little bit of a space here and here. And they curve over. They have the same kind of thickness right in through here, okay? Here and there. And then I feel where they're moving down in space. They're kind of back curved slightly like this. And they emerge about right, oh, about right here is where they touch. So I'll kind of draw just a uh, sort of a straight line just so you can get that feel here, but it's actually a little bit of a curve and same thing over. So I can bring that distance over through here. I can curve, back, slightly uh, back curve it here and where it touches about right through there, okay? So now they're both moving this way. Here's the gesture of that tube here and here, right? There's the direction of that. So now the thickness comes out a little bit further, about right in through there for this one. It's curved outward just a little bit and through here, <clears throat> like so. So we see that ellipse. That means we would see the ellipse would look like that, okay? So we have that. 
then we can find its thickness and connect it about right in through here, okay? So about right in through there, we'll connect that through, okay, and over. <clears throat> so this comes out, then this lips out just a little bit, lips out just a little bit through here, and then we connect, I'll connect this a little bit into here, and then we'll find its thickness coming down. So these will touch, I could bring that out a little bit, just a little bit further. Okay, and these could touch, so that's okay. Through here and in through here. And we'll connect this around like so, so we don't see the other side of it, so it's closed lips like so. And our lips will be kind of like that. And we'll tighten that up. Okay, let's do the other side through here. <clears throat> So they're fairly symmetrical. So what I could do, you could bring this horizontal over to help you finish it out here. That will help too as well. So you can see that it will end about right in through here. So this will come out. So we have a little bit of better idea of how we could end it here. You could bring this line over to here to help. And then we can bring our angled line over and through here. Feels like it's about like right in through there, correct? Okay. <laughs> then we can find our ellipse. Close the lips, about right in through here, coming across. Maybe I'll make a little dark line where it attaches and through here, a little darker on this side. Okay, close the lip, the lips in through there. If we could see through it, it'd look just about like that probably. Then we could bring this little tooled angle out a little bit. I didn't bring these out at all, so they're going to be a little off, but I don't care. It's okay. Not important to me. There, then we can bring this over. Okay, that little thickness. Cover it through here. All right, it comes down. This comes out and through here. Then we can bring this outward and down to the vertical. It's a diagonal here. And we can bring this down and through here. Okay, so we're almost at our tip there. Pretty good job there. And then we can start to bring this closed cylinder right in through here a little bit and we've got that closed in through and I can adjust this tabletop bring it down a little bit to about right there if I want there we go to there to there and then I could put if I want put a little shadow here as well on that side to give it a little bit of form and dimension through here curve it in and this could curve in a little bit and go tighter right in through there to there all right so we've got probably what what you might think is a pretty difficult drawing problem fairly resolved so the hardest part right had to be this foreshortening get this foreshortening corrected and correct in your composition so we have everything we wanted a shortening a widening the width the shortening of the width the tapering and also the overlapping of our form. Here's the center of that inside of the cylinder about right in through there. All right, let's tackle this other one over here in our composition too as well. Let's go on. So now what we can do is we can figure out, okay, so let's get this front ellipse. You can tell the front ellipse or the front of the cylinder is really not even ellipse. It's still a one point uh, cylinder and so it's kind of really still a circle. And so it almost touches uh, the, the PVC piping about right in through here. So I'll kind of make a mark and I'll bring my, what I'll uh, kind of just find what I think is my width of the entire cylinder about right in through here. It's a little higher up in through here. So about right in through here, I think. And I'll kind of make a mark where it's lower because it's about at the ending point of this tube right in through here. And so I can see where that ends. And so I can start to feel where this cylinder tube starts to come. This true center is about right in through here. And I can start to bring a vertical. So see how you can start to use that to find your height and your horizontal height and your vertical height too as well. It's a good measuring point for your uh, forms coming through. So here, 
right and also in through here. So now we have a pretty good idea of where we want that um, tube to be or that cylinder. So we have that in through there, okay? All right. So a little, little shading will merge in through here. Now what's happening is we see the left side going back in space. So this is tapering from its point here downward, right? So let me draw a straighter line or a tighter line so you can see it more, more edged, mechanical line. It's moving in this direction, right? And it's also moving back in this direction here. Okay. Now these images are up against just a white painted wall in our studios and so we're back here and we're moving in this direction but the cylinder does not touch that back wall. There's a little spatial difference between the two. So you can see this moving back in direction here, right? So we have that. But if it was touching and since the table is touching the back wall, that's as far as I could possibly go with it. Well, it doesn't end there. It ends about right here. I'm going to put a little mark a little dot to show you about right in through there. And that's where I want to make my curve, to start my curve. And so it gets overlapped a little bit through here. So that curve starts right in through there. I'll bring this other one over so you can start to see it. This curves and curves. Right in through there it curves, it gets overlapped a little bit more. Okay, and we'll start to bring it over through here. Okay, drawing through the object so we can see that. Later on you could either erase or tone and they'll all disappear. Draw through your objects. And so we continue with this back foreshortened end of our cylinder. We'll bring it up to here, right? And we'll reach in through here and then we can kind of come on up and this is where it finds its curve and it disappears in through here. Now we can catch this edge, right? And make it stronger. And since it's closer to us, a little bit darker and a little bit clear. And then now we'll bring this over. We'll finish this edge out too as well. You can keep it sketchy and through there. Now let's take, we'll take this and we'll tone this down a little bit here. So you can see this emerge a little bit better. Here. And over. There we go. So now we've got another foreshorten. The difference between these two is where they are in our eye level relationship higher. This one's lower, pushed down. We're slightly looking not quite down, but almost equal to our eye level in through here. And it's opaque, so we can't see through it. If we could, the overlap would occur and extend over about right in through here. I'll keep it even lighter. So this one, we wouldn't really want to tell this one's definitely open, so we'll make this line or two a little bit darker in through here, and then where it emerges right in through there. So you tell our audience that that's even more open, and this one's closed <clears throat> because we can't see through it. And I'll put a little bit of that uh, shading that we see if you want. Snazz it up a little bit. Right in through there, and then we could put a little shading so that shadow kind of emerges right where it touches that table bottom, about right in through here, and moves out. Right in through there. Okay. And so now let's go on to our last two forms. Let's add them. So the the tangerines fairly. Um, uh, spherical kind of form, I'll get my language correct. A spherical kind of form in through here, slightly back from the tubing <coughs> in through here. So the tubing's a little forward, so if I brought a little horizontal line, it would be pushed up just a little bit in through here. It overlaps slightly kind of oblong in through here. Not quite a true uh, sphere. No piece of fruit probably is. Let me close to it. And a little shadow in here if you want. This can kind of emerge underneath. Pretty easy to draw. Not a tough drawing problem, I don't think. And then it hits the, touches the bottom right in through there. Right. And so this goes back in long length shadow underneath here. And then lastly, our box. We don't see a whole lot there, but there's a, there's a distance uh, through here 
and it is pushed over even all the way over here so we can bring a true horizontal here to there so we see that it ends about right in through here and then we can start to bring a vertical up through here so we're drawing the kind of the front plane or shape of it uh, first and it's rectangular for the most part and so I'm going to draw with the seam ends and the seam ends a little bit higher than the tangerine right in through here and then we can tighten that up with my pencil through here, here and here. So we've got that. And then we have another line where it closes, kind of machine tooled in through there. And then it has a little bit of an apex, right? And it's still lower than the cylinder. Here's the cylinder top right in through there. Here's the center of the cylinder. It has a little bit of an apex here and here, correct? So we have that, we see that coming up, then we see it curve come over and then we see of course it come down and through there like so and then it gets tooled over curved over and then it's kind of machined slightly a little bit of opening nook and crack and this comes in a little bit like so and I can make it a little bit more narrow just for effect like so through there get a couple of machined lines and then I'm not going to go into too much detail into here, it's got this little component here, downward, okay, and then it ends a little bit lower than the table, about right in through there. It's got some some latticed kind of things that aren't really particularly important right now. Okay, so we've got that form in there too. All right, so that was a fun one. A little bit more difficult uh, problem to solve in drawing, right? So we've got, let's review what we have. We'll go on to another one. So we've got, we had this cylinder that was foreshortened that's slightly um, uh, above us. So we're looking underneath that was sitting on this PVC pipe with these nice elliptical kinds of structures and two, two tubes coming out of the sides. Then we have this foreshortened tube where it's roughly eye level. We don't see too much of the top, really none, or the bottom, and it's pushed over to uh, our right. Why do we know that? Because see, we see the left side of it. Our center of vision is about right in through here in the composition. So when we're looking through this way, we'll see a little bit to the left of it. And of course, we had pretty simple cylinder here and then a front plane of a box. And we don't really see the top of this. We could bring a line over, but we don't. We really don't see it. I'm just adding it for effect, that angled part of it as well. Okay, all right. Keep on making them complex. Keep on practicing. Let's go on to a few more. Okay, so probably the this next image is the most difficult one to date. We've got our viewpoint looking down upon all of the objects, and so uh, the the two cylinders I think are even probably a little bit more difficult to control uh, in foreshortening. And I think we've got more of a view of this uh, trinket or toy box over here, which is a little bit more difficult. Now we see the top and side. We have a curved top, and I think the sphere is still relatively simple, the little tangerine in the orange. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'll, uh, we'll do is we'll find in our drawing the <clears throat> table line. You can see they're distinctively different between the white and the, the gray for the table top. And so we'll find that line about right. I'll draw it about right in through here. And I'm not really worried about the edges of my picture plane since we're just dealing with foreshortening. We're not necessarily de dealing so much with composition. We are, but we're not. I'm not talking about it in a rigorous uh, kind of kind of way. All right, so I'll I'll make a little tighter line for my um, table definition between the top and bottom of the table. And so let's get to uh, our foreshortening. So. The last drawing, we drew the uh, PVC piping first, and we placed the object, the cylinder, on top. This time, I'm going to do it opposite, so that way you can you can see it done in many different kind of sections. So what I'm looking for, the first thing when I'm drawing this uh, cylinder, and it's actually slightly two-pointed, slightly tilted uh, a little bit this way across. Do you see that? So you can get you get foreshortening in two point two, but very slightly because the more you do change it into two point, it starts getting even longer on you. And we're, we're mostly dealing with more extreme kinds of foreshortening. So I'm gonna look and see where it bisects, just sketching this, this part 
in this part just to get a, a read on the length of the opened uh, ellipse or circular part. So about right in through here I think is going to be good in my composition. So right in through here and it's longest about or more open about right in through here. So we're going to draw the lips here and then we're going to work with it over in through here. Open that up a little bit and just keep on keep on coming around with it. <clears throat> through here to here. There we go. So open that up and we'll bring this curve down a little bit further. You can keep it sketchy and keep it loose. And if you if you if you have too many thick lines like in through there, maybe I could just take my eraser and just catch that and take that out just a little bit. Just to clean that up. <clears throat> just a little bit. And if you don't, that's okay too. As long as you get it accurate, that's the main thing. <clears throat> so we'll bring this down the end of this tube of the opening part of our lips and through here. All right, so we've got that. Now, since we're looking down on the cylinder, correct? Looking slightly down on, it's pushed out this way. So where is our center of vision? It's in here somewhere because we see slightly the top and slightly more of the right side of our ellipse, and, or excuse me, our cylinder. So right in through here, it starts to emerge back into space here. Okay, I can keep drawing it really long. It just keeps on going there, right? Until it disappears. And it hits the horizon line, I suppose. And then we can bring this over to here. So we're getting that tapered effect right of our two in here and here. You can draw it longer if you want, until they, until they bisect if you want. Now, now we're looking at, for shortening, here's the true test of it. So we got the tapering, we've got the width. Here, correct and I'm going to bring down what I'm what I'm seeing here this is here and this is just slightly tilted this cylinder just like so that's how so it's a slightly two point not quite not quite uh, one point just barely so all right so now we look at the width between this thickness here and through here it's not back here right that's too long we don't want that that's too long we can look at it back here. So it ends about right in through here. So you can kind of make a mark and adjust for where you want. So I'll make a mark in through there and then I'll start to bring this downward. Okay, right in through here. And it straightens out, curves in. I'll make it a little bit darker where it touches. Curves. Curves in through here in that, in that direction. Okay. And then we can bring this over and it's going to curve over and get a little little curved and straighten out and go back for our length about right there and through there right touches more so than you think about right in through there and then we'll connect it right in through in through that area so now look at that now we've got the thickness of the length of that cylinder going back into space and I can tighten this up a little bit here. You can even taper this even more if I want. Just so I, let's get this nice cleaned up a little bit so you can see it taper it even more maybe to there and bring this over a little bit and gets a little bit wider right about to there and we'll bring it down okay now we see through it correct so we can bring that and really show you that overlap look at that overlap so the overlap occurs right in through here and that's why I like using the palm method when I draw I can go to a tipped point when I want and I can show you the broadness of it and keep it lighter so see how it kind of slightly over overlaps our our table line right in through here just barely and this comes down in through here right we see that and there's our inside of our tube right in through there or our container or our cylinder or whatever it is that you use to hold things with right in through there, whatever you want to call it there we go right so we have that it's true centers about right in through here this would come out touch the true center of the end of this 
elliptical form about right in through there. So we see that now we can start to do a little shading if we want. Maybe it's going to be a little darker in through here. The overall shaded part right in through here. So we'll put a little tone, just a light tone over all of it for now. Here and then through here. We see that. And I can darken this up as it turns in. Tough problems in drawing, foreshoring, especially more extreme foreshoring. Now we can start to put on the, the um, PVC piping that it was uh, sitting on. All right, so now I can bring that down so I can kind of get a feel gesturally, quick sketch in the length of it, kind of straight vertical, and start coming over to the edge so I can get a feel for it here. And it feels like it's about, this is about nice, right nicely where it's sitting in through here. So this is going to be a closed ellipse in through here, right? So we're going to see this curve up since we're looking even more so down upon it right in this direction so we're going to close this ellipse in through here then we're going to take this up up in through here okay and in through here there we go so we've got this nice closed ellipse right in through there all right in our thickness we'll get that in through here and closed Coming over, it's angled out a little bit, so I'll put that slight angle on it. Slight angle on it through here. If you can hear that music, that's another studio classroom off to the side, so it is what it is. And then coming in, just slightly in through here where it disappears, and it's going to have a little bit of overlapping back in through there. It's going to be roughly right in through. Here, there we go. Okay, can set that down with a little bit darker line. And it'll bring up this vertical. All right, so now we've got that laid in, and we've got some more difficult forms happening in through here, some more uh, tubes coming out. Now we see a little bit of this top. Let's go ahead and get that in. It disappears in through here, so it's still closed. So it's up this direction in through here. So we'll draw through and feel that ellipse, and through here we'll feel that ellipse. Coming up, make it a little bit darker where it emerges and through here and curve, and we'll feel it about right here. So we know this would be a little bit wider. And through here, these would be equal. Up, we'll bring that that tube to there. A little bit darker underneath. All right, so we're on our way now. Okay, so now let's bring the angles down of our. Um, PVC piping in through here. This kind of makes a sort of a curvy triangle kind of form where they start to merge together right in through here. So we'll sketch that in, get a feel for that as it comes down. This curves in through here. This comes out through here. This is slightly more curved than that. Can you see it's kind of, this is curved and this is a little bit more straight. It's kind of awkward looking, but it's correct through here. So we'll bring it over. So the whole flow and direction is this way. Same thing through here. The whole flow and direction is that way. All right, so now we're going to work on bringing this over. So we'll bring the entire, I think, width or length of the, of the uh, tubing over. So it's about right in through here. And this is going to be close to about right in through there. Okay. So that closes up, then we'll bring its straightness here. Okay, bring its straightness here, right in through there. And this one's open now, so we'll see uh, the thickness part. So its ellipse inside of it would look like that, right? So we can bring this over through here. Slightly over as it disappears, and the thickness is there. All right in there, and then we can bring that ridge on across right through here and over, and we can nice angled line for that little curved angle and thickness. 
Darken that in. Maybe darken in around here a little bit. And we're good to go. We're on our way. So we can kind of connect this through where it connects up here. And then it wants to curve over like so. Okay. So we're good to go there. Let's work on the other side through here. Connect that. This curves a little bit around. <clears throat> Let's find the other side now. So we can start to bring this curvature, this curvature, right? Let's bring it now over to here. We'll find it. Everything is thrusting right in that direction. So we'll see that, so we can see this curvature. What else can help you is the negative space in through here to help. So see how this makes it kind of a triangular space? I can bring that triangular space over here too as well to help right in through there. And kind of generally feel where it's coming up and over. I know it's gonna to connect to here. It touches about right in through here. Then it's kind of machined and melted onto it. About right in through here, curved down. And this curves back and over. And then we can start to find where it truly curves closed lips about right in through here, right? So to close it up, right in through there. Okay. There we go. All right, so now we can bring, as we know that that's our thickness, we can make this part. Just sketch this out, make it a little bit thinner as it comes up and it disappears about right in through there, correct? Pointing, and then kind of coming over through here. <coughs> so we can tighten it up here. Whoops. Through there. I'll erase that out. Right about and through here. Okay. So now we have a thickness in through this area, about right in through here. I can bring up this thickness here. Okay, and then we have an open ellipse. It's opened. So it means we can see it curving and see the openness here. This one's closed because we can't see it, but we can see most of the ring and coming around it here. And through here. And we can bring this over. a little bit more precise with the tip. And then it's indents in, like so. Okay. And then we can come around with the ending part of our lips through here. All right, so I think we're good to go there. Okay, so now I can emphasize where this comes down a little bit here and gets machined over like so and through here. And so we can put a little bit of shading on this to emphasize it a little further here and of course around. Nothing too heavy or nothing too special here. Put a little bit of cast shadow down below just to give it an extra kick. Okay, and we're on our way to completing the rest of it. So that was probably the hardest part of the drawing problem. Right, right in through there. Let's, let's move over. So our center of vision, then again, is to, to refresh, is about right in through here, correct? So now we're seeing the top and slightly a little bit up to the left of this cylinder. Okay, so I'll put a little, make this a little bit darker in through here so you can see it a little bit better since it's inside a little bit. And I'll shade the outside just a little so you can see it. All right, so let's get the next one. So in terms of placement, I might start by saying, okay, how do I get this one point cylinder located? Well, all right, I'll look at the negative space between the two and it feels comfortable starting about right in through here where the ending point touches the table is about right in through here with this turn of this ellipse, so about right in through here, I can put a straight line, and nothing is going to be lower 
then this cylinder right everything is pushed back so that helps too as well all right so we have this curve coming down and it touches the table about right in through here and it's slightly a little bit lower than the tabletop which is about right in through here so here's the thickness the touch of the thickness so let's see how we can do here and over okay not bad bring this down just a little bit maybe not quite as wide there we go okay I think what I'll do is I'll waste that a little bit lighten that up and then we'll nail it down since this is so soft easy to draw over. there we go catch that there we go so now we can tighten that up There we go. Okay, it feels a little bit better. A little bit cleaner. Okay. All right, so now let's place uh, our cylinder in for shortening. So we're looking down on the object. Okay, so it's tapering away. That means it's getting narrower than its true widest point, which is about here, in which is it about here. So it's actually slightly two points, leaning in this slightly this direction here to here just just perceptually barely not enough to make a whole case for it this is truly looks just about circular so what's happening is we're getting tapering coming back here in this direction so from where it ends and disappears about right here back a little bit past or not maybe not quite actually even past the tabletop so about right in through here okay and then up and over, you can feel that emerging, or under too, if you want to start to get the overlap, which is, which is what we're going to get, part of the point of this, here, and you can feel that underneath, right, overlapping, in through here, okay. And now we see that if we get this angle, this angle would be back here just slightly over, and you can see where it starts to flatten and taper, a little bit past the tabletop, right? It's lower than, right in through, about right in through there where I put that little darker mark. And so that's where it starts to go back into space. So it's tapered, even though if we stood it straight up and looked at it, we know that it's not tapered. That's what foreshortening does. It gets thinner and visually, or tapered, if you were visually and goes back in space. That's important to to realize and understand. So, we've got our overlapping here. Now, we don't see it because it's closed because this is the bottom end, I suppose, of our cylinder. So we can darken this in, give it a little bit of crisper line, make it more definitive, come over here, really emphasize where this overlaps right here. Really get it darker where it overlaps and start to bring that over and come underneath <clears throat> and then where it truly touches is about right here make that dark a little darker tick right in through there <clears throat> And yeah, we can tighten this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we put that cylinder down on the table and we've foreshortened it. We're looking above it and we're slightly where? It's slightly to the right of our center of vision, which is roughly in this context. But mainly, the big point of this is what? Is that it is above us, or excuse me, excuse me, we're above it and we're looking down on it. That's important. There we go. Okay, through here. Then we could put a little bit of some cast shadows that's, that it's causing. It's got two or three light sources on it in the studio. Here, and it's got another cast shadow moving in this direction for now, and then we'll kind of just tone that in. And let's get the rest of this composition. All right, so now we've got our tangerine. So notice from the last drawing we did to this one how different this looks because of our point of view. All right, so the tangerine's a little bit above 
uh, are pushed back in our composition, so it's higher in the picture plane. Here and here, thickness is about right in through there, okay. A little cast shadow coming on the cylinder from the, onto the tangerine. Okay, right in through here. Form shadow. And we have a little cast shadow back in through. And this direction kind of come over. Okay. Highlight right in through there. And then let's, let's uh, finish out this drawing problem with a little bit tougher uh, problem, which is the, the box in through here. All right, so let's bring up its vertical to about right in through here. Okay, we see a little bit of this left side and we see a little bit of the top, so it's pushed over in our vision even further right because we see more of its left side. So we'll push this over and I'll bring up its height to about right in through here. And then we'll bring over its width here to here. Okay, right through there. And I'll feel where it ends about coming through the, the tangerine to about right in here. Okay, then it gets a little bit wider, gets a little bit wider with a little machining or a little, little um, look that it has, maybe stylistic, maybe Chinese, I'm not sure. All right, so this is where it kind of closes and opens and latches roughly running through there. Okay, so we have that sitting down. All right, so now we can put on its center point in through here, here, where it arches up and over to here and then downward as it comes through. There we go, right in through there. Okay. So we have that, don't worry about the detail. Structure over the detail, always. Structure is more important than detail. All right, so we have the bottom. We'll make that a little bit stronger, make this a little bit stronger so you can see the overlap. And through there, downward. <coughs> okay, now lastly, let's go for the top. So we'll bring this top back in space. Okay, feeling that angle through here, perspective, foreshortening, and we see the, don't see the end of it, it's about right in through here. This is going to come back, about right in through, I could brought this over this a little bit, but I'll show you if it's, it's, if it's slightly, there's a space slightly in between here. Let's draw that through here, okay. Well, in that box is right almost at the end of the table, but not quite because we see it's cast shadow through there. A little distance between, then we'll bring the vertical up to here. So I'm trying to relate now the visual perception of the thickness here, right, of the, get that in, of the side plane of this box, this trinket holder charm holder, running through here, this particular thickness and weight. Of course, we bring this up, so it looks pretty good. Through here, we'll bring it up to here, okay? So we've got that. There's our angle coming back. Then what we want to do is we want to put this top on, okay? So there's kind of, there's an implied line, a curve, right? that's coming in through here. And I'll start to feel its thickness. And so we can mimic this shape of our curve here. So we can come like kind of up, curved over, right? So we have that. And we see, we see, still see this top, so this can come down, right? Through here. There's the apex coming down a little bit through here. And over. And then these will connect back up about right in through there. Boom. And so now we've got this trinket box located in foreshortening here and here. It's a difficult drawing problem. So we're, we have width here and then we are tapered and we're squeezed. And there's a, there's a definite shortening between the front and to the back, right? And we also would get overlapping. So the back of the box, we overlapped it, would be about right in through here if we drew straight through it. So there's a nice overlapping that happens too uh, as well. And then we can just kind of put some detail, just slight detail in through here. 
where this little rectangle of the uh, detail design, whatever, comes in through there. Okay, we just give a few lines for the latticing just to give us a feel for its details and design. And then on the side, it does the same thing too here. And this goes back into space this way. Okay, and this moves back into space this way. And then ends about right there. And we can put some very light detailed marks in through here. And then we see the same thing on the top a little bit so we can get that in and then in this drawing. This will go up a little bit here. And then turn and almost just disappear right in through here. And then come in. And then we'll start to see this kind of diagonals and curves, so we'll start to see them do this and over and around and then some latticing and through here. There we go. All right. So it's a stronger, more difficult drawing problem in foreshortening, especially in through here, in through here, and a little bit with the, the back box too, uh, as well, the trinket box. So lots of different problems in foreshortening to tackle. Okay, I think that's good. I think you get the idea. So we did three different versions of foreshortening uh, in still life objects. Not easy to tackle, not easy to um, master, but if you can practice this, practice it drawing out of your head and practice drawing from simple still life objects, then go to more complex ones. I think you're gonna find that over time, you're going to start to, to master these forms with a little bit of help and a little bit, or a lot of bit of, of sweat equity and practice. All right, so good to go here. Okay, so that ends the second part of our foreshortening uh, lessons. And what I wanna go on to in the future, look for this in the future, yeah, we'll be dealing with a longer section on foreshortening with the figure model. We'll look at our historical references. We'll look at Mantegna's Dead Christ and maybe a few other lessons from Rubens. And then we'll use our own images from models and we'll draw lots of foreshortening. We'll spend a lot of time with the model because it's even more complex. Just remember this, what's true of simplified form, still life objects will also be true of the figure. And you'll use your volumetric you know, figuration in the figure section, go back and review that. You'll use that to help control still life, excuse me, uh, model poses and foreshortening as well. All right, stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.